Yo guys, what's up? I'm gonna cover one more game from the first day of the LEC. And this is gonna be a bit of an interesting one between Mad Lions Koi and Heretics. So, two very interesting rosters. Team Heretics is looking a lot like G2 from 2019. They got a little bit of a core there, if you guys remember. They've got Wonder, Perks, and Yankos from that roster. And they just stole G2 Flacket as well and threw in Kaiser there for good measure. Meanwhile, Mad Lions Koi have like a couple of newer players, I would say, with El Yoya as the sort of backbone there. I wouldn't be as familiar with them. Some of you at home might be, but I think the main principle here is just the clinic that Mad Lions Koi here put on against all of these veterans just because of the draft being able to set them up for it. And they had a really strong idea of what they were playing for. And they had some really interesting bands to start it off as well, just to set themselves up for such a strong opener. I'll show you what I mean in just a second, because let's take a look here. The first bands, I think they're the only team today that actually ended up banning Nico. And I swear that there's no teams that are banning Tristana as well. So this must be something very specific from Heretics, possibly from Perks, that makes the game a little bit hard for them. The Milio ban also prepares themselves for potentially a Lucian Milio R1, R2. They're a little bit scared of it. They don't want to deal with it and because their plan is to probably pick something else early, right? Which is the LeBlanc in this case, and it's really, really strong. Something to note here as well is that the Rumble has also slipped through. Jungle is completely open as well, if I recall. So there's a lot of options available. And this is where the draft starts off a little bit weird. Because Team Heretics respond with a very perks sort of matchup with the Rise. I trust that he probably had something in mind here, you know, on paper. But with the current changes to th with items like Storm Surge into play, obviously all these burst AP champions are loving it. And with so much action on the map, and so much to fight for, a champion like LeBlanc is going to love that at this moment. Aphelios again, we've seen this once before as a response into the Lucian. It could be the way the lane flows with Aphelios having a really strong early range advantage and then being able to neutralize the lane with increased sustain and then outscaling and just chilling there. And then when Mad Lions lock the Zins out here, this is basically as ideal of a draft as you want, to be honest with you. Like these are three of the best champions you could probably have in their respective roles at this moment. The reason I say that is because in the other videos, I mentioned that champions that you want and should be prioritized in draft are good in a vacuum. And they basically reveal nothing about how you want to play your game. LeBlanc is always a champion when she when she's good. She's just like that. Having objectively just good matchups in mid and not much ability to respond by an enemy laner and the ability to just play through the LeBlanc at like the entirety of the early to mid basically secures the Zin Zhao to get whatever he wants. And this early 2v2 from the LeBlanc Zin Zhao is an incredible combo as well because these two champions can line up for each other, Zin Zhao can line up the knockup for a LeBlanc route and so on and so forth. So really strong core here. Even if Felios can play forward or just normal front to back if he wanted to, and Mad Lions just have a really strong start. I would say it's a strong start in general, but also very contextually to what the needs are for patch 14.1. We have to keep in mind that what are the needs of the map? How do teams win the game in this current dynamic of the way the game is? And how can we be stopped? Right now, to be honest, this draft just secures Mad Lions a way to just get free pressure on the map. I'm really a big fan. Perhaps what Perks could be cooking something here, but uh, there's no way that there won't be windows for LeBlanc to shine here. And there, there were some classic examples of how Mad Lions just blew the game open by doing so. And you can see Team Heretics are actually afraid of these forward options from Mad Lions. Aphelios can, op can, can offer, you know, just defensive options as well. They did ban out Melio, which is one of them, but there's a lot of different combos that can work with Aphelios. He's pretty flexible in that sense. And he's been pretty good because of all the way, if. Uh, the lethality changes have been working as well. He's been stacking a lot. And as we move on into phase two, what team? What are these teams looking for, right? I think Team Heretics. They're looking for a way out. They're 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 really trying to maximize. They're going to go jungle on four here because they need a good matchup. They want to counter pick on five. They ban the Rumble to prevent that as well, and they need something that can 
prevent this Mad Lions team from really getting off. And I was always talking about things like the Trundle being picked up. Uh, there might be other picks as well into the Zin, but we saw, I believe it was K Corp that did the Jacks. Wasn't too big of a fan, but we need to find some things that might work into this because as of right now, teams can't just be getting this game this championship for free it's not in competitive it's very hard to come back from when a team that's just able to force and sync up waves and you know just get in there make plays prevent you from getting anything and then bleeding you dry like they're going to take grubs they're going to take dragon this is the kind of meta that we're in right now and it's very important i believe to get as many of these objectives as possible interestingly enough mad lions end up going for Renata here. I don't think it's because of this matchup into the Lushinami. It's not actually that good because it's more so into traditional full engage, comp, uh, full engage sort of laners. It's more so for that vibe in which Team Heretics have opted into. Realistically, this vibe pick is not ideal. They should have picked a more generalist jungler here because of the ability for my lands to see this Renata pick. So they really should have seen this threat coming. In my in my eyes again like a champion like trundle would have achieved both a lot of pressure against the Xin Zhao, shutting it down potentially and then not giving it a lot of not giving them a lot of info in terms of the way they want to play out these fights and then they have more options on top side and they can kind of play through bot could test them a little bit more but that's where that comes in gwen is also very strong in this patch probably one of the best remaining blindable top laners here as Jax and rumble are banned and then Team Heretics was surrounded with Gragas, who has been okay because of the new items, but nothing incredible. And when I look here, all, all I see from MDK here is some Exodia pieces right now, because Team Heretics, all they have is this Lushinami going for them, but they don't even have a jungle that can supplement and help them very well until six. And that's more than enough time for LeBlanc and Zao to show and just take over the game. And they're only this is basically their only win con. It's contingent on only one lane and a lane that's so sensitive that it's gonna basically lose after their first set of deaths. Like it's very it's a very, very fine line that Team Heretics have set them up for. It's not a bad thing, but considering what was on the table and what they allowed Mad Lions to get, I feel like it shouldn't have been that this hard for them. To win the game based off the draft especially with the players that they have i can show you an example it doesn't matter how much experience and like how good you are at the game how many you know how many worlds you've been to if you're not setting up your players for success you know you can't they can't turn water into wine they some laws of the game still have to be followed and that's what's happening here right leblanc let's take a look at this this is the play that blew the game open so because Elioya is very cognizant, let's keep an eye on this pathing here. He's very cognizant of the fact that he's such a strong mid laner and he can do whatever play he wants. He goes for a three camp. So he just does blue, wolves, red. And hit, and he's like, all right, I'm gonna go commit a robbery on this Vi real quick. So he goes in and somehow Aphelios Renata managed, managed to get push onto Luchinami. So there, that might be something to review as well. Although we didn't get information on it. This is where they managed to blow the game open because LeBlanc's always going to have better conditions here. They, they Zin took great advantage of the fact that he has pushed there from bot lane as well into Lucian and Naomi somehow. And this is a fight that MDK would love to take every single time because they want to fight. They want, they want to take your stuff. They want to scrap because they have the combat stats for it. And it's just like Yankos is just left out to dry. Like it's just so unplayable. And this is what I mean. Yankos is a great jungler. I'm sure he could match or try something if he was given the resources on a champion that was able to match but Vi is not that champ and this is basically the byproduct and look at Elioya he just puts on a clinic here constantly just putting on pressure and shutting down the only win con that Heretics has and basically the game is already lost by around like eight minutes here <laughs> like I think f these four kills are usually enough to just carry the game home because it's just going to result in more objectives Team Heretics are going to slowly bleed out because that's usually how comp goes with things like this. And then 
heretics are going to have to choose a fight that they have to flip the game on or else they're going to keep leading and then they're going to lose that's usually how it goes and all because of a draft where they just had priorities on the wrong things and they just gave up too much for it and this is going to be something that calibrates as the weeks pass and i wanted to point that out but such is the nature of the first week here and it's going to be a little hectic so hopefully this makes sense to you guys and i'll see you in the next one see ya